Hey everyone, I'm Scott Stokely and absolute mind blown. The production that the Las Vegas crew and the Disc Golf Pro Tour have put together here is absolutely, like it's everything we dreamed it would be 40 years ago and, and hoped it would be. And it's funny because I wanted to do a video this morning about why I was or wasn't feeling nervous and uh, I thought it's going to be way more interesting. I'm going to give a history lesson on what tournaments used to be like compared to now. Now the reason I'm making this video, and I promise this is going to make sense in a minute, is that I was feeling nervous the last couple days, which I haven't felt in the longest time. A little bit of anxiety, butterflies, and I thought I was going to get more nervous as the tournament started. And last night, I slept like a baby. And I don't mean I tossed and turned all night and pooped myself. I mean I literally like just slept all night. I didn't have any anxiety dreams. I didn't wake up before my alarm. I woke up just feeling excited, not nervous. And I, I was curious as to why. I expected the butterflies and I don't have them, just excitement. And I realized what it was. It's about, and it has everything to do with the history of what disc golf tournaments used to be like and what they're like today. Promise, this is all gonna make sense. It's all gonna tie together. So, first off, I gotta talk about what's happening here in Las Vegas because it's, like I had high expectations and it's exceeded every one of them. You show up to the tournament, you have players parking, you have tour car players parking, which is another level of parking space as they should, they've earned those spots. Uh, you have all these areas that are designated just for players, like, you know, meeting fans and spectators and mingling is a super important part of growing the sport. But at tournament time, you also need time to be just with the other competitors. And they've provided that. There's all these designated areas. It's incredible. Um, they managed to secure parking on the main street with cones. We, we took over the main boulevard in order to give players and spectators better access to parking. I mean, little things like that are a huge touch. No one's walking a half mile to get to the event. So you come to the tournament. The course is immaculate. Uh, what the Las Vegas crew has done here is incredible and partially why they were able to do it. And I, I, I'm going to say this twice. There were 150 volunteers at this event. Okay, and I said I was going to say it twice. 150 people volunteered their time to come make this a special event for the players and the spectators in the disc golf community. Thank you everyone so much. You've got this huge massive tournament central. You've got a clubhouse which has access to uh, indoor facilities, warmth, a pro shop. You had the golf carts for when you're practicing all week. You have the tournament with an amazing amount of sponsorship and sponsorship money. Uh, and, and you know a lot of the money just goes into making the event itself spectacular for everybody, not just the players making the money, but for everybody here gets an experience that comes from the sponsors. The sponsors fund this. Uh, and uh, the Las Vegas crew, they're the ones that went out and secured a large portion of this, right? And I apologize, I don't know DGPT versus the Las Vegas crew who did what, so I don't, if I mistakenly give credit to the wrong team, I'm sorry. Uh, everybody's doing amazing. Uh, you come out here, everyone's dressed sharp. Everyone looks like athletes. Everyone can throw a mile. They're so good. Uh, you had to register obviously like in advance and sign up at the last second because everything fills and it's organized and they've, they've dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's, knocked it out of the park. And that's not what it used to be like <laughs> back in the old days in the wild west days of the sport. And now before I explain what it used to be like, and I'm going to go back like 70s and 80s now, uh, let me say that that is the greatest time in my entire life and the people that gave themselves that volunteered to put the time and effort into growing the sport back then, did it with a sport that wasn't even barely a sport yet. Like it was a vision of what this thing could become. So none of this is a knock on anything. This was the greatest time of my entire life, but it was a lot different. So here's what tournaments looked like back then. So first off, um, minus a couple world championships and US Open, a couple, there, was, there were exceptions, but there was no pre-registration. Okay, you just showed up and played. If you wanted to pre-register some of the bigger tournaments advertised in the magazine with a little form you would fill out, you'd fill out and mail it in with a check, and the tournament director would say, please everybody, please pre-register, it'll make my job so much easier. And, and at least three people every tournament pre-registered, right? Everyone else showed up the morning of the tournament. Now, imagine that, the tournament director having to take registration and money the morning of the tournament. Fortunately, 
start times of tournaments were more of suggestions as opposed to rules. The tournament was supposed to start at nine. It never started at nine. Sometimes it started when the tournament directors showed up, with, which sometimes was after nine. But if they showed up at seven, it wouldn't matter because there were so many people signing up and so many people showed up at 9.05 trying to get in and you wouldn't turn anybody away, right? So that's when the tournament would, would start. Uh, if the tournament director brought scorecards, now that was a professional tournament because that didn't always happen. By the way, I'm talking about PDGA tournaments. I've been to tournaments where tournament directors said, all right, who's got scorecards? Let's get started. <laughs> there were no divisions. There was pro. Now there was a women's division and, and sometimes women came out, but the, the women's field was almost non-existent. Unlike today where the women's field is smashing it out of the park at every turn. Uh, there was very few women that played back then. So there was a division that may or may not have competitors in it. Um, there was no amateur division. Everybody that showed up entered their money and played. Now, when you come out to a tournament today, uh, like there's 50 or 100 people that could win this tournament this weekend. Back then, of the 60 people that entered, there were three because there were amateurs, there were novices, there were beginners. Everybody played in the same division. And so only a few people were actually competing for it. So you showed up. Uh, as far as how people dressed, shirts were sometimes worn. Sometimes people wore shirts at PDJ tournaments, not always. Um, uh, this was not, I mean, this was the fashion at the time, but we're talking jean cutoff shorts. Uh, by the way, most players wore shoes at disc golf tournaments, not all of them. It, this sport came from the hippie generation of the 70s, so not everybody's wearing shoes. You showed up and you played the tournament. And literally the tournaments today, how tournaments are run was invented by those people in the 70s and 80s. I mean, they were making this stuff up as they went along. I mean, everything had to be done first. Well, it all got done first back then. But tournaments were a gathering of friends. It was very, very casual. Now, as far as how the money got paid out, that was up to the tournament director. If a tournament took in $1,500 in entry fees, let's say 50 people pay 30 bucks a piece, that tournament director might want $1,000 first prize. So they give $1,000 first prize. And then they would split the 500 among the other 10 people. That happened. Other tournaments would say, I want to pay two thirds of the field and, and, and the winner got $80 and, and 20th place got 50. It didn't matter. Nobody cared. Sometimes you would take in $1,500 worth of entry fees and $1,000 would get paid out at the end because the tournament directors just kind of just spent the entry fees on the party Saturday night uh, or on some thing that we didn't know why they spent it. Sometimes we didn't even know where it went, but we didn't care. We didn't care. We were just so happy that somebody was running a disc golf tournament that we, we, show, like, we, like we came next year. We were so grateful. It was so casual, it was so Wild West, it was the greatest time in my life. I love that era. But the evolution between where the sport was and what, again, the people of Las Vegas, the, the Las Vegas crew and the Disc Golf Pro Tour have done is just astonishing. I feel like a professional athlete today. So that goes back to the question, why am I not nervous? Like, everyone's watching me. I mean, I kind of told everybody about this for 10 months straight. Everyone's watching me. Like, I, 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 like I'm under the microscope and it's the biggest event and now I'm starting the pro tour. It's the first event, I'm taking off the first hole. Why am I not nervous? And the reason why is because it really hasn't changed. As much as it's changed at the core fundamental, it hasn't changed at the fundamental level. I'm out here playing a round of disc golf with my friends. A bunch of my friends got together. We're gonna to play four rounds of disc golf with the sole goal of seeing who's the best this week. That's exactly what we did in 1980. Exactly. It hasn't changed. Everything else around it's changed, but the core of why we're here and what we do and what we love and what our goals are and our dreams, our aspirations, what we work for is exactly the same as it's always been. I'm playing disc golf with my friends this week. I'm playing disc golf with my friends all year. And every single week, we're gonna crown the title of who was the best on this given day. Same sport. Love every bit of it. Thank you, Disc Golf Pro Tour. Thank you to all the people, especially the volunteers in Las Vegas. You guys, man, you've knocked it out of the park here. This guy's been around forever and he is mind blown. 
And yes, I'm a professional athlete now. I can talk about myself in the third person. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone. If you enjoy this, if you enjoy the history lessons, comment that you want more history lessons about the sport and share your social media. That's how we put more eyes on what I'm doing. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm excited and I'm teeing off in 45 minutes. Let's do this.